Good morning guys, beautiful day here in the north, zero degrees, everything is melting. And I have one more trail that I'd like to get to at the far back swamp, uh, the Trapper Trails. This might be one of our last times to get back there because the swamp's going to start melting any day if it already hasn't. So we're going to stick to the good trails that Tom and I have made this winter to get there. And we're going to go for a hike, Gage and I, and do the last trail. And uh, we'll just see what we can find back there. I'm pretty sure I know where it goes. And that will be the last exploration of the far back swamp, I think, for this winter. Now because it's warm and I'm expecting this to start, it won't, so let's film it just in case. We haven't drove the snow machine in probably eight, nine days. Well, look at that. Make a fool of Gary. Well, we're here, and had I been thinking, I should have brought a bush lunch today. It is absolutely gorgeous. Maybe even plus one now. It's warm, it's beautiful. I would say this is the first real day of spring. Uh, I see some more folks on the far side of the swamp. So hopefully they're not coming the same way I am. That's the thing about being out here in the bush, right? Like yesterday's video, I just pick a random old road. I kind of had an idea of what was there yesterday uh, in terms of it just dead ending at the snowmobile trail. So I knew there weren't any houses around, but then we get the strange knocking, which I can't place. I can't figure out what that would be other than another human or an actual Sasquatch. <laughs> and as far as I know, there's no people around, but can we guarantee that? No idea. All I know is that uh, Gage and the deer don't know how to pick up sticks and bang them against trees like that. And the banging that we get is loud, echoing. It's like a hollow thud, right? We hear this all the time. It's a big stick being whacked into a tree. That's what it sounds like. It's not woodpeckers. It's not trees popping especially not yesterday. Uh, it was raining as I showed you guys in the video. So again, around zero degrees. I can't explain it, but I also can't write off that maybe there aren't other humans out here. These trails are actually quite treacherous right now because they're very well packed. And being that it's mild, they're very slippery. They've got a little thin layer of melt on top of them, so they're very treacherous right now. Yeah, I saw that. Gage just put up two partridge right here. What kind of bird dog are you? You didn't even chase them. Yeah, he knows better. It's spring, eh? We gotta let them go. They're making babies this time of year. Now I gotta try to climb that. The camera never makes it look as steep as it actually is. It's about 25 feet straight up. Luckily this one's in stages. And I can grab trees along this side. <laughs> there we go. We made it. As my grandfather used to say, this trail is uphill both ways.
So funny enough, just as I started the snow machine this morning and we were getting ready for this trip, Tom sent me a text message. So Dave is his father-in-law. He owns the house next door. And Dave is the one who told me about these trails back here being made by the trapper. And he told me there's a, another whole set of trails closer on the close side of the swamp. We're, we're traveling across the big swamp uh, to get back here to this set. And apparently he found uh, a cabin in there. So Tom sent me a photo. I'll put that in here for you guys to check out. I don't know the whole story, but this is as far as we know, it's all crown land. And on crown land, which is government land in Canada, you can't build any permanent structures, but there is a log cabin built there. So I'll see if I can get to the bottom of that story. Is that the trapper's cabin? I know he's a much older fella if he's still out here. And I did hear from another neighbor that he is still out here trapping. I think he's late seventies, early eighties now and that he still does the, the run on the swamp, but I think he does the close swamp. So maybe this log cabin is his. And these trails that were put in and told to me by Dave that these were his trails from 25 years ago, people have taken over now. There are no traps here, no Martin boxes, no, as I've said, nothing. People have turned these into hiking trails, but maybe he's just shifted closer to the road, which would make sense. It's easier for him to get to. And especially if he has a cabin hidden away in there somewhere, Again, we never know where humans are going to be, right? Not supposed to be able to build anything here or be in this certain area, but uh, it happens all the time, right? I know of a dozen little fishing camps that people have built hidden away because it's a two or three hour drive to get into some of these places and you want to camp out or bunk out with as much comfort as you can. So guys will build an eight by 10 bunkie, you know, or uh, just enough basically for a kitchen table and two bunks and a little fireplace or, you know, a wood stove. And that's how they do it up here and it's hidden away. And what happens is if the ministry finds those, they just burn them down. They burn them to the ground. Anything that's in them, you lose. So guys don't put anything uh, valuable in there. And I've even heard stories of guys having their camp burnt down and going back and getting the wood stove because the wood stoves don't burn down, right? So what do you lose? Really nothing, some plywood, bit of foam for your bed, that's it. So I think I've actually found proof of the trapper using these trails a long time ago, 20, 25 years ago, which is what I was told. Behind me, uh, a beautiful birch here, okay? And if we look way up here over my head, probably nine feet up there now, I'll zoom in with the camera, I'll turn you guys around, there is a blaze mark from an ax, okay? So the trapper would not be using the orange tape, like these, these are all just the people coming through here that are scared of the bush and they don't want to lose the trail so they put up the orange tape. The old trapper would have blazed, you know, one every 200 meters or something and he would pay very close attention to where he's going. So I'll, I'll show you guys this. I'm 100% sure that's what this is and that's who, you know, taking the size of the tree and the height in here, that's, you know, 20 years ago. That's when that blaze would have been put on here. White birch, in case anyone was wondering. That is one big white pine right there. So back in the early 1800s, I told you guys Cranberry Farm isn't too far behind here, maybe a mile from where I stand now. And this is the first old growth that I've seen on these trails. That's gotta be a 200 year old white pine right here. And there's a few more that go up behind. So a lot of this had to have been logged back in the early 1800s. Okay, so we are now officially 45 minutes into the walk, somewhere around there, and we are on new trail. I don't know where any of this goes. 
what we're going to find or see. Probably not a lot. I think this is going to take us out. The other trail that goes around the, the swamp that we took before comes out on Cranberry Trail, halfway down. And if you go another three kilometers or something to the end where the lake is, I think that's where this trail is going to come out. There's another one, probably four feet across at the bottom. Just massive. I'm overdressed for sure. Warm for sure. Okay, there, you just put a partridge in a tree right here. So there was a couple more of them here. I'll see if I can find it. Didn't go very far. That's six partridge we've seen on this trail today. Yeah, spring fire. Just a little one and a hot dog. That would be, you know, a cup of tea right now. I wasn't thinking. I definitely was not thinking when I left the house. All right, guys, we are at the end of the trail. And we are very close to where I thought it would come out. So we are at the far end, close to the lake. The lake is just a couple hundred meters, a couple hundred yards, close enough around the bend up here, down that way. So the other trail that we followed comes out, you know, maybe a mile down, Cranberry Trail behind us. And this one comes out here. I thought it would have came out right at the lake, but close enough, I guess. So we're just gonna turn around and go back on through. Okay, I just heard something and Gage heard it and he took off running ahead of me. I thought it might be another person coming down the trail. I don't see anyone and he's come back. No, I guess we're still alone out here. Just us and the spirits of Cranberry Trail. So all told, that was about an hour and 10 minutes to come through and hit the trail. So to where I had walked before was 45 minutes. So a two, uh, two and a half hour walk today, that's pretty good for Gage. <laughs> Gotta be good enough, I hope. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'm gonna put up some pictures that I take along the way and we'll catch you in the next adventure. Ah, uh, too funny. He was whining. <laughs> he had a big stick <laughs> and it wouldn't go between the trees. Dude. <laughs> oh, you gotta pick a short one. Well, it's a beautiful day, so when we were coming out, there's one more trail that goes to the left. And I thought, well, let's take it. It's got to go down to the lake. And behind me is the lake, but it was a much farther walk <laughs> than I thought. 
So actually we are on that old road that I take you guys in on the spring and we metal detect all along the shore of uh, Nipissing. Uh, we did a couple of videos last spring. So now I've got probably added an hour walk all the way back around the Great Big Swamp and we're parked on the far side of it. So, but it's a beautiful day. So I will not complain. I will just carry on and enjoy my day. All right, I lied. I didn't want to go all the way down the lake. Oh, it's got to be two miles to go around. And I got to a certain point and the trail branched again and I thought, oh, I might come back up to the big swamp and it did. So that's not really the big swamp, but that's the, the tail end of it. So we've only got to go one mile if this trail goes the right way. The snow is so deep that uh, I can't really, well, I can leave the trail, but it's not any shortcut when you do that. It's so slow going. We'll see where this goes. I guess there's more trails in here to explore than I, than I thought. Oh, cross your fingers, guys. I think this is it. 20 minutes later. I think we're there. I just have to cross this one last big swamp. Yeah, this is it. We are parked on the far side of that. Well, that was it. The trail turned back into the swamp. So now I gotta, I gotta just cross here. Hopefully it's not too soft and we're not gonna sink up to our waist too many times. I know if I get out there far enough, I've made quite a few skidoo trails. <laughs> you guys have seen the video, so hopefully it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It's only knee deep. I see it. There it is, the snow machine. That's it. This time I mean it, I'm signing off. I am whooped. That was a lot more adventure than I signed up for. Thanks for joining us guys. We'll catch you in the next one.